welcome back to the next October Eve video here on my channel. I am going to be jumping right in today with this really fun project using up a bunch of scraps. This is going to be a very die cut heavy card. We're going honeybee stance here using some green and grunge and then the Halloween, I think it's like the hocus pocus Halloween um, paper pad as well as a ton of scraps. Then we're going to be pulling in See, so the thing is, I made this card once before, and I just didn't love it. I, it's nice. It's a good card, but there's just so much that I just wasn't thrilled about. I loved how the bottles turned out. I love the flowers, but the size and how everything was laid out, I just wasn't happy. So we're going to reimagine this card. We're going to tweak it. We're going to make some updates. I'm going to save and reuse that um, sentiment, which did come from the Hocus Pocus Stampin' Dies. I have the Potion Bottle Dies. I have the Cone Flower Dies. We're going to cut out one more of those, as well as some of this greenery. Um, I love this die set for year round. It's absolute perfection. Um, so yeah, we're just going to be doing a lot of inking. I have ground espresso, aged mahogany, crackling campfire, and forest moss. So lots of those really deep, rich, Halloween distressed tones. And I'm going to be going in with this really bright orange. We're going to be cutting one of these cone flowers with this super bright orange. I thought I was going to need two, but I was going to repurpose the one from my other card and just like rip it off. But I ended up only needing one or wanting one in my scene anyway. And I do have to tell you now, I, you know, I'm already a huge Halloween lover, but I'm also a spooky, scary Halloween movie lover. And so this card was heavily inspired by the movie Practical Magic, um, 1998, Sandra Bullock, Nicole Kidman, love it. Um, I grew up watching it with both of my parents like separately. Um, my dad loved it as like a Halloween movie. My mom loved it as like a sisterhood girl power witchy movie. <laughs> um, so uh, at the end of the movie, Sandra Bullock says um, that the, you know, the things to keep in mind is to always th throw spilled salt over your left shoulder uh, plant rosemary for luck, keep lavender at your garden gate, and fall in love whenever you can. And so the salt, the rosemary, the lavender, it's all here. We're going to say that the love is my cone flower being all lovely and bright colors. And that is the inspiration behind this card today. So I am going to go in I die cut all of my little green bits. I die cut my flower. I'm using this um, Distress Craft paper for the bottles. And if I could do this over again, I would not use this paper. I ran out of the cardstock that I used on those original bottles and I glued those down um, in a way that I did not think if I tried to pull them off of that other card that they would survive. So I switched up the paper and the thing about this paper is it's coated so you can see with all of this other cardstock when we go into ink the ink goes on super rich and pigmented and it's super vibrant and I love it I love how this crackling campfire looks and we're going to add a little aged mahogany on here too with this bright bright orange um, this is a scrap of an orange from Heffy Doodle. Oh, I love it. I need to get more of it because it's just the perfect Halloween orange once you add these inks to it. Um, but the coating on that craft distress paper means that the inks don't stick the same to that. So if I could do this over again, I would definitely switch up papers. Um, I was just so bummed that I used the, the last of that brown paper that I had on that first card and the other browns I had were just really dark and I wasn't looking for super dark. So I made it work. Um, I was going for that kind of root beer bottle, like that brown glass bottle feeling. And I think it still comes across. It just turned out different than I was planning. That's all. Um, I did use the, this like the backside, I think, or like it might be that same kind of coated, um, distress where it has that very like 
yellowy tone to it. I use that for the top part of the cone flower as well as the corks and I love how that turned out. So you can see I pulled that one off of the other card um, but like I said before we're not going to use it. It's now just extra. I still have it saved. I have it right here in this bin um, as well as the maroon flowers. I saved those too because they're too beautiful not to use on something down the road. Um, but yeah, you can see the, my fingers were pulling that ink right off of this coated paper too. It just, it didn't ink the way I wanted. My alcohol markers didn't go on the way I wanted. Um, so we're going to get really inventive here in a minute and kind of get a little wacky with how I'm going to make my alcohol markers work because I thought it was going to look like that first draft and it just did not. Um, so it took a little work going back and forth with that ground espresso, trying to darken up all of those edges and not wipe off any of that ink on my fingers. I layered up the extra little glass pieces and lined up the corks with where they were going to sit at the top and just kind of used a pencil to mark them out. I didn't want you to be able to see the bottom part of the cork under that lip of the bottle that we're adding. So I just trimmed it off. If you wanted to go for a more transparent look, um, you could leave it there, but I thought it seemed weird to me for it to be the exact same like color the top part that's out of the bottle and the bottom part that would be inside the bottle in theory with this color bottle wouldn't match right if you were using clear glass it would 100% match and you could just leave it um, but with a brown bottle that did not make any sense so I'm going in with my Studio Katia um, embellishment wand to pick up those smaller pieces when needed um, it just helps to keep my fingers out of the glue if you don't have an embellishment wand I highly recommend one. I think there, there's a lot of very similar ones out there, but they do make these types of things much easier. Then it was time to go in with my Forest Moss ink on this green. This is like a very, very vibrant green, but I knew I really wanted to be able to ink these up a lot. And if the paper was already super dark, the ink would not show up. And I wanted all of that kind of veiny texture on those leaves. So I went even more vibrant um, than I would normally so that once I added all of this other color to the top, it would kind of mute everything down and it would also compete with that bright orange at the lightest parts of my flower petals. So I cut two of this branch, which has kind of that lavender feel to it, where the top part is going to be um, purple flowers. And I just took my time kind of blending in the same direction that the stems were going, so that way nothing got bent folded, dented, torn off, that kind of stuff. That's always my concern when I'm ink blending on these kind of die cuts is just trying to be really gentle so that I'm not hurting anything. Um, it, it can be hard to find the balance because you want to make sure you're getting a good bit of color on there. I also use some Villainous Potion to ink up my purple flowers, kind of just playing around to get a right amount that seemed appropriate. Um, I'm going to go in and add glue to the green parts um, and then we will add that purple right on top. I have one that has the little extra flower bunch at the bottom. The other one I didn't bother cutting that part out because we're going to trim these and end up actually layering them so they turn into one stem. And I decided after the fact that I didn't like that you could see the green through, so I just took an even darker BV marker and shaded all of those little gaps in so it just looks like one solid purple bunch of flowers. And I'm also going to go in and add just a little bit of dotting and texture to these to kind of I know it doesn't make sense. I just said I'm making them one solid, but also breaking them up. I just wanted it to look like all flowers and not branchy. So now is when I'm going in with some W markers to shade in these bottles. And because these are coated, the alcohol ink cannot saturate into the paper. And so it's sitting on the top and so it will not blend. Copic colors blend by how they soak into the paper and bleed into one another. And because these can't get through that coating, there will be no blending. It just turned really streaky. So what I'm going to do is still color these up the way I kind of wanted to 
as if it was working correctly. And then I'm going to go in on this smaller bottle and I'm going to turn it into the salt. I'm going to go in with a white gel pen and add a bunch of different layers, tapping with my finger in between each layer to kind of break up some of the color and make some of them a brighter white and some of them a softer white. And then for this bigger bottle, I grabbed a bottle of 91% isopropyl alcohol that I keep for sanitizing and cleaning my Copics, like sanitizing my space, comma, and cleaning my Copics. And um, I'm going to take that on a cotton ball here in a second and add some texture. I guess I do that in more than a second. We're going to get the background of this card set up apparently first. I'm going to use that green polka dot as kind of a wallpaper background and that wooden piece that's left over from the grain and grunge paper pad as the kind of countertop tabletop where all of our stuff is going to be set out. So I'm just trimming all of that down. And we're going to put this on to a top folding A2 sized card base. So these are all going to be trimmed down just a little bit smaller so that we see that black outline, that black mat all the way around. Here I'm cutting that panel, my eight and a half by 11 black cardstock in half so that I can score that, fold it over. I like to fold it in my score tool so that I can um, make sure my edges are all lined up and I realized that I trimmed down my wooden piece to match the five and a half side instead of the four and a quarter side so I trimmed that again and I went over all of the edges with a matching brown Copic marker just so that I don't get any of the white center of that paper up against all of the black and rich dark colors I don't always do this, but if I am using a black background, I like to do this. I did the same with the green panel you saw with a green marker. And I'm going to go in with my Tombow Mono Adhesive to get that uh, all of that in place. This is just going to let me kind of line everything up and give it a good squish down. Here's where I'm grabbing that isopropyl alcohol on my cotton pad and by just kind of pouncing it around, you get this really fun kind of bubbly texture and I don't know what's in the bottle that would possibly make it look like that, but I love how it looks. So it's a magic potion and we're just going with it. I kind of just have my flower laying over there to the side just to get an idea of where everything is going to fit. And I'm going to start out by gluing down all of my little greenery pieces first, going in, um, working left to right. Um, this was just to make sure that, you know, I could manipulate and move things around as needed. We're going to glue down this big leafy base first. Um, the individual flowers that I cut, I didn't even end up using. And I'm sad because they look so pretty, but they just didn't fit the overall feel that I was going for. I love that the Simon Says Stamp uh, black thin foam squares work on these bottles so well because they come in two different sizes. So you can use the chunkier, thicker ones, or I guess wider ones on the larger bottle part and then the smaller mini squares on the neck of the bottle. So here is where I'm turning those uh, three different branches into one branch, adding just a little bit of adhesive. I have um, like that white piece of paper is the backer to another like foam sheet. So it the nothing sticks to it. So I like having that around to use with my adhesive like tape runner because then it doesn't stick to my desk or my paper, whatever else I'm working on. I trimmed down and added that second big kind of chunky flower or chunky leaf section under my flower and I tucked the flower a little bit under the bottle neck there which I thought was kind of cute just adding adding even more layers and dimension. Um, I'm gonna adhere my lavender branch into place. It kind of split apart but it's okay because I can just tuck it right back under make it look like one solid branch again. And then I realized I had these extra leaves and there was that gap in between the bottle and the flower. 
that I decided needed a leaf. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't know, guys. I think I was still just flustered because that first card didn't turn out the way I was expecting. I think in some places I overworked this one a little bit, but I do really love how it turned out. And I love that the Practical Magic kind of witchy feel that I get from this card without it just being over the top, like cartoony witch. Um, I think it's fun to switch up styles. And I also really want to make sure that with this series, I'm sharing with you guys a really nice combination of ink blending and Copic coloring and die cutting and embossing and like all the different things. Um, I pulled that which has got to stick together sentiment off of that other card to use over here. I had an issue with the placement and when I pulled it off, it tore the paper a little bit, but I found that by coloring in the white part of the paper that was exposed, you could not tell. And this is the copper embossing powder that I used to heat emboss that sentiment the first time. So that is my card all complete. I love how it turned out. It makes my heart happy. Is it what I imagined in the beginning? No, but it's still beautiful. And I hope that it inspires you to get creative, combining different sets and seeing what kind of trouble you can get into. I hope that you have the most amazing day. I will be back tomorrow with another Halloween October Eve series video. And until then, guys, happy crafting.